Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. It feels like I don't have to go into super depth about this story as everyone knows, well pretty much everyone knows about what The Amityville Horror actually is. But I know that there are some people out there that have no clue what happened in this house. So... I will try to go in depth in this video. So, as the event in this house that is over in America, in a area called Amityville, was a supposedly haunted house. Now, this is a non-fiction book, but it is actually written in a very unique way, as it is written in a kind of a novel type of format because I've actually read another supernatural book or paranormal book or whatever you want to uh, categorize it as called The Demonologist by Ed and Lorraine Warren and yes they are mentioned in this book but it's only at the end but The Demonologist is a non-fiction book uh, supposedly about real events I made a whole video re review where I go in super depth about that book, so I will have it linked down below in case you want to check it out. But that book is written in a non-fiction way. It's not a linear storyline or whatever. It's written in a kind of a textbook type of format. But this, even though it is a non-fiction book, and that's what it's categorized as, it's written in a linear novel type of story format. Yes, the way it's formatted is in a diary type of entry. So each chapter begins with a date that the Luxes stayed in this house. Then each chapter revolves around a specific day or days, because some days are grouped together, that they spent in this house. So the first book is a non-fiction book. I know that there are several books in the Amityville series, which are supposed to be fiction books that are inspired by the events that happened within this building. I actually have another one by Jay Anson called 666, and this is uh, in, inspired by the Amityville Horror. I got this one cheap off of eBay, and uh, I'm planning to get round to this one at some point. I'm not sure when, probably this year, maybe on Halloween. So before I get into this video, I usually say that this is going to be a spoiler free video because this is a non-fiction book that is kind of irrelevant because this happened in supposed real life. And I just wanted to say that this is just going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book and what I believe really happened in this house. I'm not trying to step on anyone's beliefs or what you believe or um, stuff like that. I do believe in heaven and hell and God and Satan. So as a result of that, by default, I should believe in angels and demons, which I do. The concept that I try to find hard to grasp is the fact that they have the ability to go from their dimension into our world. And also uh, the fact that... Um, we have people that supposedly can talk to the dead and demons called mediums and psychics. I have a strong dislike for them type of individuals, but I'm not going to go into that now. But when it comes to Ed and Lorraine Warren, I find their career to be kind of, you know, did it really happen or you know, what, or did they try to get famous from it? But I've watched interviews from them, and they both seem to be really, really nice people. Now, getting to the book. Now, the Amityville Horror started off with this family called the DeFeos. There were the wife and the husband, and they were three sons and two daughters. But one night, for no apparent reason, well, I'm sure there is a reason, but we don't know what it is, that Ronnie DeFeo shot and killed his mother and father, two brothers and two sisters, 
while they were sleeping in the same, you know, in the house on the same night. And then obviously he got arrested and sent to prison for this. Now there is kind of a um, great area about why he did this. Some people think that he went insane. Some people said that um, his uh, father was abusive to him. And of course, um, people were saying that the house was possessed and demons and devils were telling him to do this and all that type of stuff. But I'm not sure about where I stand with this, but what I do find it incredibly interesting is that no one was woken up by these gunshots. And he used a rifle or a shotgun. And I do not care if you are a really deep sleeper. If you hear a loud bang in the middle of the night, then despite how much of a deep sleeper you are, you will be woken up by that. So several years have passed after this, because uh, this actually really happened. This isn't fictional, this really happens. And several years after, a family called the Lutzes, which this book revolves around. Yes, this book does talk about the DeFeos, not in super depth, but it does touch on the fact about what happened to them and what Ronnie actually did to them. But the Lutzes have moved into this house and they know what happens. The real estate agent is open about it and what happens and they get the house at a reduced price. And they move in with their two sons and one daughter. And this is just their account of their time in the house because they only lived in this house supposedly for 28 days and then fled in terror and never went back to the house ever again. And this book just recounts their tales about what happened to them. I won't go in super depth about what happens, but supposedly they were um, harassed by all these devils and demons. George was constantly cold within the house. He was always making fires and trying to keep himself warm. At the end of every um, at the end of every day, he went to the boathouse to check to see if it was locked. He had no idea why he was doing this. The family dog on the first day tried to kill himself by jumping over a fence with a leash that was tied to, you know, I don't know, like a tree or something or a rock. And he jumps over a fence and he was, and was hanging from the fence with the collar around his neck and supposedly uh, re referenced or nudged at that the fact that these demons scared the dog so much that it tried to, you know, off itself. And Catherine is trying to, she's the anchor of this family. She's trying to keep everything together, even though there's all this weird stuff and everyone's acting out of character. The two boys are trying to uh, fight with each other and argue all the time. And the daughter has a mysterious invisible friend who is a pig called Jody. Now Jody is a massive pig. She's mentioned a lot in this book and even George and Kathy have actually supposedly saw her through a window and she had red, and well no, not, not she, Jody, Jody was a guy or a, or a male and he had red glowing eyes and when they went out they saw the hoof prints in the snow outside the house. They saw all these occurrences, they saw all these flies that were buzzing around this room and that was dying on a windowsill and this was in, in the middle of winter. They saw all this black goo or sludge in the toilet basins and um, throughout, throughout the house. All the toilets had all this black slime or gunk at the bottom of it. They had all this strange, I think it was green slime oozing from the walls. And what was really strange is that George put his finger on it and tasted it. I'm thinking, dude, if something's leaking from my wall, I'm, the, the like, last thing I'm going to do is lick it or taste it. Uh, to see what it is. I might smell it to, to actually see if there's a smell to it, but I'm, there's no way I'm going to put it in my mouth. And there was a priest that came to the house to bless it, I think, at the start of this book. And the priest had a very um, bad experience in one of the rooms and the house. And someone in the house told him to get out 
and he was very scared about coming back to the house. I don't think he ever did. And uh, Kathy had occurrences where an invisible entity was hugging her and touching her hands. And this book actually has, not many, but it has a few plans of the house. So, not sure if it's only in this edition, but it was really cool. So this is just about their experiences within the house. I'm not sure whether this happens, but regardless whether it did or did not happen, this was a really entertaining book. It was a really entertaining story. Uh, I mean, I'm going to pass this copy on to a charity shop and I might listen to it again on audio. Not in the super rush to actually do so, but, but please let me know what you thought about or think about this strange occurrence if you've read the book if you've watched the many movies about it what do you think happened do you think it happened did you think it's not happened do you think it they it was something that they made up to try to sell to actually sell a book but please let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments as i said i'm a skeptic but if you are a believer that is perfectly fine we can have a polite and civilized conversation about it down below in the comments and as a whole, I think I rated this a four stars out of five. So that's it guys. That is my little review slash discussion about the Amateurville Horror by Jay Anson. And hopefully you've been entertained by this video. And with all that out of the way, have a great day. Read some awesome books and I will see you all in my next video.